Okay, geometry fans, welcome back. Today's topic, we're going to start chapter 7 here. It's a pretty quick unit, actually. We're going to be talking about similar figures. Today's topic, though, is going to be a review. We're going to talk about ratios and proportions. Now, um, the warm-up, so foul shot competition, that's something that I'm going to be doing in class. Okay, so don't worry about that. Um, before we start, though, let me tell you your geometry joke of the day. What do you call an angle that gets all the answers correct? And the answer is right. All right, so a couple definitions to start off here. Ratio. Ratio is a comparison of two numbers by division. And we'll write that using two variables. Now, you can write this as a fraction, A over B, or you can write it like this, A colon B. They both mean the same thing. As an example, if we say 2 over 3, 2 thirds, that's the same thing as 2 to 3. And the way that we read that is 2, 2, 3. 2 to 3. It's a 2 to 3 ratio. All right, now, so ratio is just a word fraction. And if you look at the word fraction, you'll notice that the word ratio is actually inside of it. So a proportion is where you take two ratios, two fractions, and you set them equal to each other. So it's two fractions that are equal, basically. Now, we say that these are proportional if a times d equals b times c. Now, to get a times d is we multiply these two, and to get b times c, we multiply this way. And what we call this is we cross-multiply. Cross-multiply. So we draw these lines, and they go across each other, kind of like in a diagonal shape. Okay, These are called... A, D, and B, C are what we call the cross products. If two fractions are proportional, the cross products, whoops, cross products, not productions. If two fractions are proportional, the cross products have to be equal. Okay, so let's use examples with numbers. Let's do an example with numbers. 2 over 3 equals 4 over 6. Okay, now you know this is true. If you reduce 4 over 6, you get 2 thirds. And normally what we do is we reduce the fractions. Now, if we cross multiply here, then what happens is we'd say 2 times 6, and we would do 3 times 4, and what we'll see is that those are equal. You get 12 equals 12. So what does that mean? It means that the fractions are proportional. That is true. Basically, the equal sign, you know, you're asking yourself, is this true or false? And if you see a problem like this, they're telling you this is true. So we would say two-thirds is proportional to four over six. They're the same ratio. They just look a little bit different. Now, one of the cool things about proportions is that there's a lot of different ways to set them up. If I take two over three and if I take four over six... And if I flip both of those, 3 over 2, is that equal to 6 over 4? Okay, I'm going to put equals with a little question mark right there. Is that still proportional? And look at what happens. 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 6 is 12. So the answer is yes. You can flip the fraction, and that's still going to be the case. The proportion will hold. Now, there's a little bit more vocabulary here. When you do your cross-multiplying, the A and the D are what we call the extremes. The B and the C are what we call the means. And that's not something that you're going to get asked a whole lot, but that's just something to be aware of. All right, so let's look at some examples where we actually solve these. So we'll do uh, 2 over 18 equals 9 over Y. The way you solve a proportion is you cross-multiply. And I always draw these lines here, so I connect them. That's what I'm multiplying. 2 times y, so I say 2y, and then I do equals 18 times 9. Now, most of the time, you kind of you don't write that step down. You just do that. You do the multiplication, and that's going to give you 162. Now, it's a normal equation. You solve it, so you divide by 2, divide by 2. y is equal to 81. Now, number 2... 
So we'll take x plus 3 over 8 is equal to 4 thirds. So we're going to cross multiply. Now this is where you have to be careful. This 3 is multiplying not just the 3, but all of this, x plus 3. So I'm going to write 3 and then parentheses x plus 3 equals 8 times 4, which is 32. So what happens is you have to distribute. That's 3 times x, which is 3x, and then 3 times 3 is positive 9 equals 32, and then we'll solve it. We'll go minus 9 on both sides, so that gives us 3x equals 23, divide by 3, and what we get is x equals 23 over 3. You could keep it as a fraction, or you could say that that's 7.6 repeating. Now we want exact answers. Don't round that to 7.7. .7. All right, number three. Okay, now this is a little more complicated, this proportion, but the process doesn't change. We're going to cross multiply. The 84 is multiplying 2x minus 1. So I've got to put that 2x minus 1 in parentheses. 84 is multiplying all of it. And then we have 138 times x plus 2 in parentheses. So now you distribute. 84 times 2x is 168x. 84 times minus 1 is negative 84. 138 times x is 138x. 138 times 2 is 276. And remember, I have to put an equal sign here. This is a, like a left side and a right side. They're the same. All right, so now we'll solve it. Let's move the variables onto the same side. Let's go minus 138x, minus 138x. So that gives us 30x minus 84 equals 276 plus 84 plus 84. That gives us 30x equals 360. And then you divide by 30, x is equal to 12. So that works out, whoops, that works out a little bit nicer. Now, if you're not sure that that's really the answer, well, let's take the calculator. If I take, let me do 2x minus 1. So 2 times 12, I'll use parentheses. 2 times 12 minus 1 is 23. And then the denominator was 12 plus 2, which is 14. 23 divided by 14 is a decimal, 1.6428. How about 138 divided by 84? Does that give us the same thing? Yes, it does. What does that tell us about the equation? It tells us that this is true. All right, now let's look at a word problem here. We'll look at a couple word problems. Oops. Number four, the angles of a triangle are in a 2 to 5 to 8 ratio. What's the measure of each angle? Well, 2 to 5 to 8 if I were to double this, if I were to multiply each of these by 2, times 2, times 2, times 2, that would give us 4, 10, and 16. This is still a 2 to 5 to 8 ratio. Because I could divide these by 2, and it gives me this original ratio. Now we're going to use that because instead of 2 to 5 to 8, let me think of this. If I'm going to draw a triangle here. Now I know that the angles cannot be 2, 5, and 8. That doesn't add up to 180. But if I say 2x to 5x to 8x, now they all have the same, they all have the same x here. I could divide out the x and I still have 2 to 5 to 8. So what I can do is add these up, 2x plus 5x plus 8x, they add up to 180. Now we get uh, 7 plus 8 is 15x equals 180. Divide by 15, x is 12. All right, so we got 12 again. Now the question is, what's the measure of each angle? So let's go back to the picture here, and let's plug in a 12 for all these x's. So we would have 2 times x, so 2 times 12 is 24 degrees. 
we'd have 8 times x, 8 times 12 is 96 degrees, and then we would have 5 times x, so 5 times 12 is 60 degrees. So the three angles are 24, 96, and 60. And if I take that, let's go ahead and add those up here. 24 plus 96 plus 60, does that equal 180? And the answer is yes. Okay, so the answer is good. Let's do one more here on the front. On a map, 1.5 centimeters represents 200 miles. How many miles does 2.4 centimeters represent? Well, when you are comparing values like this, you're making a comparison. Let's go ahead and make a proportion. A proportion has four pieces. A numerator and a denominator on the left, a numerator and a denominator on the right. Now, what we want to do is fill these numbers in and solve for the missing piece. So they tell us 1.5 centimeters, so I'm going to put 1.5 on the top, represents 200 miles. So I got 1.5 centimeters equals, well not equals, but goes with 200 miles. So I'm doing centimeters over miles. The key thing with a proportion is you have to compare each ratio the same way. You have to set it up the same way. If this ratio here is centimeters over miles, then this one has to be centimeters on top, miles on the bottom. I have to set it up the same way. So how many miles does 2.4 centimeters represent? So 2.4 centimeters is on top. And then this is x right there. And now we solve it. We'll cross multiply. So we get 1.5x equals 200 times 2.4. Let's see here. 200 times 2.4 gives us 480. So 1.5x equals 480, divide by 1.5, so we get x equals 480 divided by 1.5, and we get 320. So x is equal to 320, and that's miles. Okay, I want to be consistent with that, that's 320 miles. Okay. Flip it on the back, which currently is blank, but we're going to put one more example on here. Okay, we'll do this. Do a real quick example. Um, let's say we have something like this, and we'll call this A, B, C, D, and E. And let's go ahead, we'll say that uh, AD is 3, that CD is 6, AE is 4, EB is 12, and, um, excuse me, EB is 8, we'll make that 8, and then we'll say that DE is 5, and CB is 15. If I say, what's the ratio of AE to AB, AE to AB? Well, we could say the length of AE is 4. I'm going to write it as a fraction. And the length of AB, now AB is the whole thing here. To get the whole segment, we have to add the two parts. So 4 plus 8 is 12. And we always reduce, so your answer is 1 third. That's the ratio of AE to AB. If I said what's the ratio of, let's say, DE to CB, like that, well, DE is 5, CB is 15. Okay, so we're just matching it up, and that reduces to 1 third, which is the same thing. And that's all we're doing with ratios.